Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you know who I am, if you don't, my name is Kylie. I feel like I haven't like sat and talked in a while. Like I feel like I've been pretty sporadic or just maybe not so sporadic, but more just not really like sitting down regularly because I feel like my life has been a little crazy. I've been feeling much better. So I was like, I don't know what to film because I uh, am not, I don't feel mentally prepared enough to film my April wrap up yet, but I have bought a plethora of books in maybe like the last few months. This is definitely like collective. To be honest, there's some books that I haven't really looked at since buying them at the bookstore, but I do remember when I was at the bookstore, I found them to be interesting. This will not be in a particular order because I don't have the stack in a particular order, but I can share where, if I remember what bookstore I bought it from, I will let you know. Um, but yeah, this is just my little collective book haul. The first book that I have is On Being Blue by William H. Gass. I would say my love for bluettes definitely influenced my interest in the title of this. The blurb is, On Being Blue is a book about everything blue, sex and sleaze and sadness, among other things, and about everything else. I would say structurally, it's pretty just like short thoughts and vignettes, I assume about different sort of ties to blue and whatnot. And uh, it sounded interesting to me. I haven't really heard much about it. Haven't seen people talk about it, but it sounded cool. So I got it. And I got this at Open Books in Chicago. I believe the West Loop location. Yeah. The next book that I got is The Foreign Legion by Clarice Lispector. I saw this one at McNally Jackson in Williamsburg. I've never seen this book in person and I do believe I will be in my lifetime a Clarice Lispector completionist. So I was just like, why not? I'm gonna buy it because I will probably have the desire to read it at some point in my life. To be honest, haven't heard much about this one either, but it says it is a collection in two parts gathering both stories and chronicles and offers wonderful evidence of Clarice Lispector's unique sensibility and range as an exponent of experimental prose. So I think it's more, you know, like short form stuff and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the stuff in here overlaps with what's in this guy over here, but who knows? I don't really know, but I really do enjoy this cover. I think like I don't love the font, but I love the color and the artwork that they chose to put on the front. The next book I got also from McNally Jackson is on feminist film theory and Cleo from five to seven. This was a really expensive book. It was, I am embarrassed to admit that I paid for it full price. Um, it was $30, but like, whatever. I already did it. So it is what it is. It's just basically, what you would think it is. I think it's just like kind of feminist analysis of the movie Cleo from five to seven and I've seen it before and I enjoyed it. And I'm interested in learning more about like film theory and how especially feminism kind of intertwines with that as well. And so I thought it would be like an interesting way to dissect film and I was interested and that, that's not something that I'm very deep into but it is definitely something that i have an interest in so i picked it up i paid a lot of money for it for what it is but whatever the last book that i got at mcnally jackson in williamsburg is this audrey lord collection this this had like a plastic covering over it when i bought it there's something about it that's very like i don't know official but it's just like i think it's a collection of essays, poetry, interviews, lectures, a little bit of everything. Audre Lorde is probably one of my favorite authors or at least one of my favorite nonfiction authors. And I just thought this was like such a gorgeous book and I've never seen that before. And yeah, I, to me, it was like a no brainer when I saw it, I was like, this is gorgeous. So I bought it. The next book that I got was The Rabbit Hutch by Tess Gunty. This was a recommendation from Pato when we went to book people when I was in Austin. They said that I would like it and enjoy it. So I said, 
hell yeah, I'll buy it. It seems a little fucked up, but like in a good way. It takes place in the summer. So I like to read books when the seasons, and, you know, I feel like that's kind of the vibe. I don't know. I would say generally I've seen this book floating around and overall people have had good things to say. So, and it won the National Book Award. So that's kind of good news. This feels like it's going to be something a little more plotty than what I usually read. And that the bar is pretty low in terms of plot for me because I don't read a lot of things with any form of plot most times. The next book that I have is this poetry collection by Emilia Rosselli. Um, it's called Sleep. And honestly, the title was just interesting to me. And I haven't heard of this poet before. She's Italian. I don't remember if I said it. But of the few pages that I read, I was interested. And it's kind of more prosy poetry. There's, it's really sunny right here. It just so happens, so there's lots of shadows, but. And I do like prosy poetry. So I'm excited to read that one one of these days. So this is another one that I got at Book People that I forgot to mention, but this is Nausea by Jean-Paul Sartre. I read a couple pages of this and I was like into it. It seems very stream of consciousness and weird which I generally enjoy. Um, we'll see. It's written in diary form and it's about this guy, a French writer, and he just seems to be like freaked out. So yeah, why wouldn't one want to read about something like that, right? This next book that I got is Why This World by Benjamin Moser. Uh, this is a biography of Clarice Lispector, and if you haven't picked up by now, Clarice Lispector is everything to me. So I wanted to learn as much as I could about her, and I found one of the few biographies there are on her out there. And Benjamin Moser, I've seen, I've noticed that I've read his translations of her novels, and there are a lot of her recent Lee release translations are by him, but I'm interested to see what I can learn about her from this because she seems to be a very elusive figure in terms of like, I don't know, like there's not a lot out there on her or maybe it's just buried in the depths and little crevices of different books and corners of the internet. But I feel like I don't really know much about Clarice Lispector and I'm really interested in learning more. And the next book that I got was On Photography by Susan Sontag. Don't love this cover, but I was kind of desperate when I picked it up, even though I didn't even start reading it when I bought it. The idea was like, I was gonna read it immediately upon buying it, but I was not in a reading headspace, so I didn't. I don't know, I've never read any Susan Sontag before, and I personally do love photography and the art of photography and just the general like everyday practice of photography. Um, I think that like something we all engage in is photography, like whether that be on like an artistic or personal level. Uh, so I was interested in reading more like hashed out, thought out, fleshed out is the word. Versions of my thoughts in the form of this essay. I'm sure Susan Sontag is much smarter than I am, so. The most recent book that I got was The Crying Book by Heather Crystal. I got this at City Lit Books in Logan Square in Chicago. I've seen this book lingering around shelves for years and I've just like been interested but not interested enough to pick it up. And then came the day that I was interested enough to pick it up and it was just the other day and I started reading it and it's good. It's about like crying and different forms of crying and the science of crying and just like every single thing about crying emotionally, scientifically, et cetera, et cetera. It's kind of like narrativized almost in the form of this little collection of thoughts if you will. I mean, it's not like a fiction novel. It's most certainly nonfiction, but there's definitely like a through line and a general theme. And yeah, I've started this one. So yeah, that's the last book that I have to talk about. But yeah, these were all the books that I got kind of recently. The sun is very bizarre, but hopefully it like is visually interesting. I don't love it for me, but like, I hope that it like is cool for you, maybe, I don't know. Anyways, 
Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you when I see you.